Presbyterian Ladies College opened its doors in 1888 with 39 students. From those humble beginnings, the college has grown, continuing to support and encourage the education of young women. As a result, we have educated over 15,000 girls in our 135-year history. We are very proud of our rich heritage, of all our students, our alumni, families, and council. In this video, we want to celebrate all who have been educated and all who have educated over 135 years. We will look at historical objects that help tell PLC Sydney's story. The college's first classes began at Fernley, a gentleman's residence in Ashfield. Dr. John Marden was the first principal. This timetable is from that same year, 1888, and belonged to Nessie Seawood, near or who was a PLC Sydney girl, from 1888 to 1893. In 1892, she was the school captain. School went from 9.15 a.m. to 3.40 p.m. It's in beautiful condition. Wow, isn't it so weird to see something that a girl so long ago used every single day? Mm -hmm. And interesting that there are some similar classes to what we have now, like French, algebra, English literature. We're so lucky that we have this piece in such good condition. This is a bell used before PLC Sydney introduced automated school bells in approximately the 1960s. In the early years of the college, the girls rang a bell such as this one every morning when classes were due to start. This shell dates back to an excursion to the Great Barrier Reef in May 1931. Personalised with the signatures of the group, it is a very special treasure in the archives holdings. 20 girls and two chaperones went on a 10-day trip to Norwest Islet in the southernmost part of the reef. The girls slept in tents, went reefing to look at beautiful tinted coral and beautiful fish, ate fresh fish three times each day and enjoyed singing and dancing. Although it was during the Depression, they certainly managed to have some fun. Don't you think it's amazing that in that time they could take students to the Great Barrier Reef and especially young women as in that time we were the first school to take a group of students to an excursion like that. This mask was donated by Winsome Menzies, PLC Sydney student 1942 to 1947 and was used by Australian soldiers during World War II. World War II was declared in 1939 and in 1942 the Royal Australian Air Force, RAAF, requisitioned the PLC Sydney campus in Croydon and the students had to move to a temporary off-site campus in Strathfield. The RAAF occupied the PLC Sydney Croydon campus to house the Radar Unit 1 RIMU, later 1 RDIU, which carried out highly classified technical activities connected with radar, which were vital to Australia's war effort. PLC Sydney students returned to the Croydon campus after the war in 1947. This swimsuit belonged to Barbara Crichton Nee McKinnon, who was a PLC Sydney student from 1956 to 1961. You can see her initials BM embroidered in red. Swimming at PLC Sydney dates back to 1927, when the first swimming pool was opened. This was during a time when swimming was not particularly common especially for young girls. The College Council deemed it as an essential skill and built the pool to support the girls in their learning. The pool was the venue for lessons, life-saving training and swimming carnivals for many years. In 2004, the old pool was demolished to make way for the J.D. Oates Aquatic Institute, which was officially opened in 2006. This is a record from 1964 of a meditation on the Holy Spirit composed by students Jennifer Bryson, 1952 to 1965, and Catherine Garrett, 1961 to 1965, with choirs and orchestra of PLC Sydney. It also includes a program to the event. PLC Sydney is the first school to be grounded by the Presbyterian Church in New South Wales. The Presbyterian foundations of the school created the Christian ethos that continues today. Christianity and faith have always been a core component of the PLC Sydney education. In 
1989, PLC Sydney celebrated its 100th anniversary. As a part of the celebrations, the students dressed in vintage uniforms that were worn by the first PLC Sydney girls. On Jersey Day 1988, the entire PLC Sydney community made up of current students, ex-students, staff and family took a refurbished 1903 steam engine from Central Station to Croydon. This was to imitate the Earl and Countess of Jersey's mode of transport to the opening of the main school building in 1891. The school community also celebrated by attending the Centenary Parade in Ashfield. The Special Presentation Assembly, Centenary Thanksgiving, and the Centenary Dinner and Book Launch. Students and staff put together a time capsule that will be dug up in 2088 on the school's 200 year anniversary. It's really interesting to see the different styles as this is a replica of what a PLC girl used to wear. It's interesting to see how fashions and clothes change and how our fashion is so different to what they used to wear. I think I'd probably prefer our current uniform to this one. Same here. <laughs> this is a Toshiba laptop that was distributed to students in 2005. Computers were introduced to the Macindo Library in the 90s. Technology has revolutionised learning at PLC Sydney. The interactive whiteboards, digital platforms and educational apps now used to engage students wasn't always the way we learnt at PLC Sydney. As technology continues to advance, PLC Sydney is continually adapting teaching methods to leverage its potential and to equip students with the skills necessary to thrive in a rapidly evolving world. Who knows what we'll be using in the next 135 years? Well, I don't think we'll be around to find out. But I bet our school still will be.